John this morning.
reject, uh, reflects Jesus Christ. After all, what did he tell us to do in Peter? What did he call his disciples to do? What's he calling us to do? Follow him. Follow in his steps. That's the way Peter uh, words it. Christ, when he called his disciples, said, follow me. You know, that call hasn't gone away. We are still called to follow Christ. I like as I, as I look at that verse, we know that whoever is born of God does not sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. Excuse me. Keeps himself. And the wicked one does not touch him. Shall I go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 4? Because you see, we have someone living within us. We are sealed with the Holy Spirit. God dwells within us. I like what he tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, where he says that when we need help, we can come to that throne of grace, boldly come to that throne of grace, that we might find help in time of need. He is there for us. I like as I, I think about what that means to us. When we are tempted, God is there for us. And He is there to help us. And none of us can say, somebody made me do it. The only one who made me do it is me. Because look at this verse. Look at what He says in this verse. Greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. I love that, by the way. I love that because that simply means this. He can't touch me. <coughs> Excuse me. The he I'm referring to is the wicked one who is in the world. He can't get to me because greater is he who is in me, which is Jesus Christ, than he who is in the world. Who is the one in the world? Shall go to Ephesians chapter uh, 2, verse 2, and you can see who's in the world there. You see, in the world, what's it say then? That he's the prince and power of the air. That Satan is the one who is in control. Satan is the one who is in the world. And there's a lot of people who follow him. And a lot of people who want to say and do what he asks them to do. But I don't have to worry about him. Because go back to 1 John, Char. <laughs> Char's going to be busy back here for a moment. I have Jesus Christ living within me. And the one who is in the world, he has nothing. I like how Christ dealt with him where he said, get behind me, Satan. I like that because that's the same thing that we can say, go away. Leave me alone. I don't have to listen to you. I don't have to be bothered with you. <coughs> I like that as he says when he says there, and the wicked one does not touch him. I like that. What's that mean? Well, that means if I have a problem or if I go into to do something that's wrong, why do I go there? Because I decided to. It's not because he wanted me to. It's not because he made me do it. It's because I decided to do it. Mm -hmm. I like what that also means. It means that he can't get to me. The world may try, but Satan himself can't get to me. You know why? John. John chapter 10. I am in the hand of God, in the hand of Christ. And the hand of Christ is in the hand of God. And what he says there is this. No one, no one, is able to pluck them out of his hand. You realize what that means? What that means to us? That means that no matter what is going on, no matter how hard he may want to get there, God is protecting us and he can't get there. I like that. I like what that means. That means that it doesn't matter what's going on in this world. All that matters is that I belong to Jesus Christ and yes, he is the prince and power of this air. And that's Satan, he's the prince and power of this air. And yes, he has some control here. And yes, even Christ put it this way, that he shall build his church and the gates of hell 
shall not prevail against them. We are built in the center of Christ, uh, not Christ's domain, but we are built in the center of Satan's domain, and we are here as a shining light to those who need Jesus Christ. And Satan himself, even though he would want to stop the church and would want to stop the message of the church, he can't do it. <laughs> he can't do it. Yeah, we're in his domain. Yeah, we're here proclaiming Jesus Christ. And yes, he doesn't like it. Let me tell you something. There's nothing he can do about it. Because God's the one who's in control. I love that. He can't touch us. Let's go on into the next verse. We know that we are of God. And the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. David, you kind of said something about that. You just talked about how you love being here, but out in the world you just find all kinds of things. And that's true. Why? Well, because, shall go to Proverbs? Because he's in control. Proverbs says this, there's a way that seems right unto a man, but the way in there is death. There's a way that seems right to a man because boy, he lives in a wicked world. He lives under the influence of the wicked one. And the wicked one is saying, oh, everything's okay. But God is saying, no, it's not. God is saying, there's a way that seems right unto a man. I mean, he's got this all figured out and it's all laid together. And, and in this world, he's got it all figured out what it might be. But what's the end of it? Death. The wages of sin is death. You know, you, you think about what he's saying here. Uh, as you come back to verse 19, and Shark, come back to verse 19 there, if you will. Notice what he says. The whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. What does that mean? That means the whole world is influenced by Satan. And if you don't think that's true, you haven't been paying attention. If you don't think that's true, just read a newspaper or watch the news sometime. It's very true. The whole world says, hey, this is okay because it's under the sway of the wicked one. Shark out of Matthew. That's about a broad way. Everything's okay. Everything's fine as far as what the world is concerned. It doesn't matter. Ever, and, and I hear this, and I hear this from people that I think should know better. Well, everybody's going to heaven. It doesn't matter what you believe as long as you're sincere. So let me tell you something. Everybody's not going to heaven. Amen. And it does matter what you believe. You can be sincere and be sincerely wrong. <laughs> there's a broad way. And there's many who are on it. Why? Because Satan doesn't care what path you take. They all lead to the same place. His path, that is. And that path is under his jurisdiction. And that path is under his way. And there's many who are on that path. And where's that path lead? Back to destruction. Back to death. Back to, to the uh, ways that, that we don't want to think about. But there's another aspect in that verse. And there's another aspect in John, chapter 1 John 19. And the other aspect of the verse here in Matthew is this. There's a narrow way. <coughs> I don't like part of that where it says, Few there are who find it. But there's a narrow way. The one that is that narrow way. It's Christ. It's his word. It's what he has to say. It's kind of narrow. Now let me tell you why that's kind of narrow. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. There's one way. That's kind of narrow. There's one truth. That's kind of narrow. 
There's one message, and that's kind of narrow. The world will like to say, hey, everything's okay. Anyway's okay. But God says it's my way. You've heard people say it's my way or the highway. Mm -hmm. But that's kind of what God's saying. Yeah, he can say that. He made the highway. Oh yeah, I've been called bigoted for what I'm about to say. I've been called narrow-minded for what I'm about to say. I've been called worse things for what I'm about to say. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have the truth. Yeah. And that's all it is. You see, shall I go back to that verse in John, 1 John 19? We know we are of God. We know we are of God. Oh, how can you possibly know that? Because he says so. How can you possibly know that all this other stuff is wrong? Because he says so. How can you possibly know that that's the way to eternal life? Because he says so. How can you possibly know that? Because he says so. It's not because I say it or somebody else says it. It's because God says we can know. I love that. Now how can we know the whole world lies under the uh, sway of the wicked one? Because God says that they do. It's not us. It's God. But God made a way to get away from that. That's in verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true. <coughs> Excuse me. And we are and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. True. 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 Did you notice how many times that's written in that one verse? Over and over and over again. We stand on what he has to say. Let's take a look at that for a moment. The Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. The Son of God has come. There's nothing that we have done. We, we saw him as an old rugged cross. He came. He provided a means of salvation through himself. He gave to us something that we could never have on our own. And then he didn't just leave us there. He wants us to know things. He wants us to, he wants to have a relationship with us. Now, I like where he says, giving us an understanding. Now, an understanding and as far as I'm concerned on some things means I don't know much about it. But I have an understanding of it. I, I could carry on a conversation, but don't ask me for any details. Well, I don't know everything there is to know about God. None of us in this room know everything there is to know about God. You can know everything there is in here and still not know everything there is to know about God. I keep track of what messages I have preached by marking them in the Bible for what, what date I have preached on this. And I went back through four different Bibles, which covers the last 20-some years. And I haven't ever used this passage in those 20-some years. You say, there's always more. There's always more. And a brief understanding is, I might have some understanding of God, and I might know some things about Him, but one of these days, think about this, I'm going to see Him, you're going to see Him, and we're going to have all that understanding completely revealed. He has given to us salvation. And that's enough for now as I think about that. That we may know him who is true. We may know him who is true. Well, think about this for a moment. What is Satan? Well, he's a liar and a liar from the beginning. That's what God calls him. <clears throat> he's talking to the Pharisees at the time. He says, 
says, you're of your father the devil, and he talks about being a liar from the beginning. But we don't follow a liar. Who do we follow? The one who is true. The one who, when they say something, you can depend upon it. And know it. And rest assured in that. And we are in him who is true. There's that word true again. And his son, Jesus Christ. How great that is. When we woke up this morning, or you wake up tomorrow morning, how many of you have to go, am I still a Christian today? Did I do something yesterday that God decided to get a mic before? How many of us have to say, well, God, I wonder if you're, you're going to keep your word today? How many of us wake up and go, well, I, I don't know if that's going to actually happen or not, because I know God said it, but... Let me ask you, what type of God would he be if he couldn't keep his word? He wouldn't be God. Wouldn't be true. Could not depend upon it. But we have a God that we can and do depend on because he is true. And I like as he concludes this verse, this is the true God and eternal life. This is the true God. Now think about what's happening here in, in John's time. There's a lot of different gods. There's a lot of different idols and that's part of why the last part of that verse is in there. Keep yourself from idols. There's a lot of different gods out there. There's a lot of different ways because, you know, there's, there's all these other kinds of things out there. And, and He's saying, okay, all those others, who are they? They don't matter. Well, the same thing is going on today. Think about that chart I showed you earlier. There's one God. There's not all kinds of them. There's not all kinds of ways. And people might want to say, yeah, there's all kinds of ideas, all kinds of ways, and your way is just as good as mine or whatever. That's not true. It's God's way. This is the true God. I'm sorry. Anybody who is following any other God, even if they are using the name that we have, and they are not following what he has to say. They're not following the true God. And they're headed for destruction. That's another one of those bigoted statements, I guess. <laughs> but it's a true statement. If you don't have Jesus Christ, if you're not following Jesus Christ, if he is not your Lord, if he is not your Savior, if he is not the one that is important to you, if he is not the one that you seek for guidance, if he is not the one that you are talking to, if he is not the one whose words you pay attention to, you're not following the true God. The true God. This is the true God. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. I am so glad God doesn't change his mind on anything. Because if he changed his mind on one thing, he could change his mind on anything. My God doesn't change his mind. Matter of fact, in James, it says there's not even one iota of shadow of turning things he doesn't even think about changing his mind. I love that. We have a God that we can depend upon. And then he concludes this with little children, keep yourselves from idols. He started this by saying we don't sin, but keep yourself from idols. You say, wait, wait a minute. There's a problem there. 
even as Christians, even as Christians, we can be misled. And there's a lot of Christians who are. I don't want to try to name anything or anything of that nature, but there's a lot of Christians who are. There's Christians in those churches that I referred to earlier. There's Christians who are uh, following the wrong thing. And John, as he writes this, he says, keep yourselves from idols. And how would we do that? We would turn back to Jesus Christ. And seek what he has. This morning, John, as he concludes this passage, basically puts out two different worldviews. And that was two different worldviews are very simple. You're either following Christ or you're not. I think I forgot to have him put this verse in there, Char. Gathering or scattering. Okay, I didn't tell you to put it in there. We are either for him or against him. We are either gathering or scattering. I want you to notice in those verses, there is no middle ground. You are either for him or against him. You're either working with him or you're working against him. Where do you stand? As I said, there's only those two world views. There's the one that I'm going to say is right. And that's his. And the one that is wrong. And that's Satan's. And those are the only two world views out there. And John. I think in this passage puts it very eloquently where he says that this world is under the sway of the wicked one. And it encourages us to stay with the true God. Let's go ahead and go to our Our Father is in the name of Christ. But we thank you for who you are. But we thank you that your word is true. And Lord, we thank you that you don't revise it and change it and uh, adjust to societies, but Lord, that we can stand upon it and follow it. Lord, this morning, we just ask that you help us to see which one we're following. And Lord, to make the choice to follow you. And we ask these things in your name.